Awesome. Come on in. Come on in. Hear ye, hear ye. Gather for the word of Zamran. Amen. Uh, cool. Awesome. We have the right screen. Um, all right. Is everybody having a good time? Yeah. yeah. Glad you came. Have you made your friends jealous? Made your enemies jealous? Come on. Yeah, this is great. Uh, it's been absolutely wonderful to be surrounded by so many kind, nice, like-minded people. Uh, you know, except for Dwayne up here on the front. I don't know. <laughs> I tease, I tease. You know I tease. Um, cool. So we're here to talk about making crazy beautiful UI with Xamarin Forms. So I would imagine you are interested in all kinds of tips and tricks that I hope to be able to share with you today. Um, of course, these are not for gratuitous usage, uh, but we can do some really nice things. I get asked you know, a, a variety of questions all the time, obviously, through Twitter, through email, uh, through speaking at conferences, about uh, how do you do X, Y, and Z, right? Um, probably the, the main one is how do you do parallax? Has anybody done parallax before? Anybody in the room? A few people. Has anybody attempted to do parallax and said, screw that? All right, got a few of those. So uh, I will show you some parallax. It's actually pretty awesome, pretty easy. And, uh, and I've got some other stuff. I had a lot of fun building these demos um, because I was using Hot Reload. <laughs> so uh, it was a lot of fun. I filed some bugs. Some of them got fixed. Some of them will get fixed. Some of the improvements are still yet to come. But uh, we knew that it was ready to be out there in the wild, so I'm glad that you're going to be getting it in your grubby little, greedy little hands soon. And I hope that you'll take the opportunity to provide lots of feedback to the team. Let us know how it's working for you. Let us know where it's not. Cool? So that's my uh, Twitter handle. Uh, at the end, I have my email as well. Please reach out anytime. I do apologize if I don't get back to you like immediately, um, but I, I do read all of the emails and I try to respond to them all. Sometimes I suck at time management, so you know how that is. Cool. So I thought the first thing that we would talk about, if my arrow works, one of these buttons has to work. It literally does not want to forward. There it goes. Hello. So I thought we would talk first about themes, colors, fonts, icons, because uh, have, you've probably followed the uh, Apple announcements. iOS 13 now has dark mode. Yeah, more phone time in bed. That's what we're talking about. So, uh, so you know, that's important. And uh, people are going to be asking you, maybe you're already asking, how can I better support these kinds of things in my app uh, to make sure that your app feels like it belongs, as it should, on the iOS platform, as well as Android, of course. And so how can I best address these things? So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I tend to look for. Um, now, my background, before joining Microsoft two and a half years ago, I had a company called Render. Um, and we did consulting. It was myself, partner Ben Bishop, um, and several contractors. Um, and so we did apps for startups, we did them for enterprises, we had big customers, we had little customers. But one of the common themes was uh, it was very creative, very forward thinking. There was a very high bar for user experience. So we were constantly doing things that we couldn't find any precedent for, or you just had to work it out. So some of these are tips and tricks from useful resources and practices that I have. So one of the first ones is finding resources like this. This is uh, color.adobe.com, used to be called Cooler, K-U-L-E-R. Um, and so this is a website, and there's also a mobile app that you can use. And you can take pictures of colors, you can take pictures of uh, a whole photo, and it will tell you what the color palette is. And so if you're looking for just a set of like five, six colors that kind of fit a particular theme, this is a good resource to go to. If you're color challenged, um, this, is, this is good. Now, Something to keep in mind from an accessibility standpoint, just because there's a color palette doesn't mean that it's going to be great on your phone, doesn't mean that it's going to be great for, color, for accessibility, because when it comes to uh, color, contrast is very important. Uh, you have to take into account color blindness and things like that, so you want to be aware of that. 
Um, I didn't promote this in my deck, but uh, I know on Mac in particular, um, there is a plugin that you can uh, install, or it's not even a plugin, it's an app you can install, and it will uh, turn your screen into a representation of what different colorblind people see. Um, and that will really op open your eyes <laughs> to, to, to what you're dealing with and what those people live with every day. You know, green is not necessarily green as green, perhaps, um, that sort of thing. So this is one really good resource. Another one is coolers.com, is that coolers.com? Yeah, coolers.co. Um, you know, just Google for these, check them out. Uh, but again, really good. They'll give you the RGBs, they'll give you the uh, hex, hexadecimal colors. Um, you can do monochromatic, you can do you know, contrasting, all kinds of stuff. Um, but it's a really great resource, and you can kind of start there. Now, what are your options when you go to do uh, themes within Xamarin Forms? So you probably are thinking about themes, so you search the word theme with Xamarin Forms, and you find this xamarinforms.theme package, right? Has anybody used this? One, two. Wasn't it a pain in the butt to get set up? Yeah, way harder than it needed to be. Um, so it was a preview that the team put out many years ago, um, and it's still preview because it, it turns out it really wasn't the best approach, and so a lot was learned, but it still sits out there uh, just in case anybody wants to use it because we really haven't replaced it with anything. I would not recommend uh, using it. Uh, I would ignore it. Pretend it doesn't exist. Um, we may remove it at some point. I've been asked, hey, when can we ditch this thing? We have a habit, especially um, now that we're part of Microsoft, that we don't want to remove anything that anybody might have a dependency on without plenty of warning and, and labels and things. Um, so then you've also got uh, Grile Kit. I call it Grile Kit, um, but I've heard it pronounced several different ways, but um, I guess I'll just be an ignorant American and call it Grile Kit, because it's like uh, the Holy, Holy Grail, right? Grail, Grile. Um, so, that's a really great one. It's super easy to use. I've grabbed that myself and used it. They have a really robust theming engine inside of uh, Grile, and uh, you, can, you can use it. It is commercial, so you do pay a license fee. Um, I don't know what the current arrangement is and stuff like that, but in my experience, it's been worth every single penny. Uh, I set up a high school robotics team. My son does the robotics stuff, and they wanted to build a mobile app to basically uh, track the other teams in their competitions and, uh, and basically do scouting, but, the, but they wanted it to look good. So I set them up with a, with a license and everything and they were just blown away. They were like, this is exactly what I want. I want to be the cool kid and my stuff looks awesome by default. So then the other way you can go about it is, is writing it yourself. Of course, uh, writing it yourself means you're going to do a little bit of work, but you own it and you know it end to end. And uh, that's another one of the reasons that we really never evolved the Xamarin Forms theme package is because with styles, static resources and dynamic resources, you really have everything at your fingertips you need. Um, so you don't necessarily need a whole package to make it harder. We, we make it pretty easy. So I'm gonna show a demo here in a little bit, and that's the method that I use, dynamic resources. Uh, something I picked up from our customer advisory team. I was looking through some of their code, and I'm like, that's awesome. I'm just gonna totally use that. <clears throat> so we'll show that. Some other stuff when it comes to fonts, uh, we added this recently, I think it was Xamarin Forms 4.1. Uh, we added some new name sizes, um, and it's good to use name sizes, especially when it comes to accessibility. Um, so I have parents that are getting a little harder in the, in the eyes to see things, you know, and so you pick up their phone and it's like smacking you in the face with the font because it's so big. Um, so I've actually seen some of you here uh, with really big fonts on your phones, so. Uh, this is good for you, too. Um, yeah, but we added some new stuff. Uh, James Clancy, one of our engineers, sent in that PR. We have some additional uh, beneficial work coming for fonts as well to make it easier to do cross-platform. Um, we have in the works the plan to uh, essentially drop a font file into your shared, your .NET standard project. Whoops. Uh, but you know what I mean by shared, right? We don't, we don't talk about shared in terms of the dirty shared project thing. We're talking about... .NET standard projects, um, which there's nothing wrong with shared projects, but just to be clear about what I mean. Um, drop that font in there, and it automatically does the, uh, the pre-build stuff necessary, so you don't have to worry about setting up info.plists. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, combining the names or figuring out 
how does Android reference this font versus how does iOS reference this font? I mean, you've all enjoyed that, I'm sure. Um, and you've used that trivia with your friends to wow them how you can do custom fonts on iOS and Android, but we can make it easier. So that's coming as well. So you use these, and then uh, when, when the user goes into the accessibility settings, they, they switch their font size, they automatically get the benefit of the resize. Whereas if you hard code those uh, text sizes, then it's fixed. Now I would say um, it's up to you to, to use your discretion and work with your team to figure out where to use named font sizes and where to use fixed font sizes. Um, perhaps everything doesn't need to scale, right? Um, so that's something that's at your disposal. It's not an all or nothing thing. You use it as it makes the most sense. All right, so here are the ingredients of what I'm going to work with. Um, a theme service, essentially I'm just going to utilize the existing uh, app resources. Uh, preset styles, uh, and then I'm gonna apply dynamic styles. So let's look at some code, shall we? That didn't take very long to get into code. All right. Cool, cool. All right, where is Zappy? Okay, so here's what I got. Um, doo -doo. Uh, let's see, what is the zoom key? What's the zoom key? Plus, plus? Command plus? Ah, oh, look at that. Doo -doo. All right, so come here, little cursor dude. This is Windows, it's so hard for me, you guys. Doo -doo. All right, so over here, in my styles folder, um, I have a default theme, I have a dark theme, and then I have a white theme, which is horrible naming. One should maybe be a black theme, or maybe the white theme should be a light theme. Why I mixed white and dark, I can only blame on lack of sleep. Um, but I'm sure you name everything perfectly the first time, right? Naming's easy for you, it's hard for me, I totally get it. Um, okay, so we'll look at those files in just a second, um, and then I've also got uh, some other stuff split apart here. Uh, global XAML, um, which brings everything together, really, um, and then I've got icons over here, sizes, and text. Um, do, is this a practice that you use? You kind of, if you have a lot of resources or a lot of styles to find, you break them up into categories like that? Yeah? Raise your hand for me if that's something you do. Um, all right, so it's not crazy after all. And get me out of here, there we go. All right, so here is my global XAML file, and so I've got all my colors up here, and maybe that could be factored out, refactored out into a, a separate file. Uh, by the way, we're looking at the Zappy app. Um, maybe I should pull up that uh, Edge. We're all using Edge now, right? Edge on Windows. It's been great, I enjoy it, I'm on the Canary. Uh, I updated all of my stuff last night, not just uh, my Edge, all my Visual Studios, all my Xamarin's, because I'm like, hey, I got two talks tomorrow, what's the best thing to do? <laughs> Update everything. I have no regrets. All right, so Zappy, it's up on my GitHub. That's like a tree, whatever. So um, this app is really, it's kind of, you know, I did the, the Little Things Playground app during the 3.0 series, and I really enjoyed being able to kind of uh, battle test some of those things as they were being released. It also created a nice little reference, but it was butt ugly, right? I'm like, oh, we can do better than this. So how about we, we build a reference app? So Zappy is that reference app for the 4.0 series where I'm just adding features, showing how we do things, adding scenarios. Uh, when I Twitch stream, we usually add a screen or something to this uh, to show off some technique. Uh, and, and, and enjoy ourselves. So that's what this app is. You can clone it, you can uh, send me PRs. Um, if you wanna see stuff in the series, uh, send an issue, we'll work on it, it'd be cool. All right, so that's what we're working on. Um, and so I have you know, your typical resource dictionary here. Um, let's see here. Uh, I've got some of the flyout gradient colors because Zappy has a gradient. Of course, everything has gradients. Are you seeing more gradients? Requests for gradients, yeah, it's back. Next thing you know, we'll have beveled edges and then, you know, oh, could you make that look like leather? I really want that to be leather. <laughs> it's, it's coming, y'all, it's coming. I mean, really, WebAssembly is, is, is kind of like the, the second coming of Silverlight, isn't it? A Little bit, yeah. Um, and then of course, I, I pointed this out uh, in a previous, in my last session, 
Uh, when you have a style and you have uh, types that derive from other types, you can use this property here, apply to derive types. Um, this is in particularly useful with the way that we did the aliasing for shell. So in shell, it's a shell item, shell section, and shell content. That's the hierarchy. Um, but it makes a whole lot more sense to be able to say, I want a flyout item. I want a tab. I want it to be a tab bar with multiple tabs. Those are alias names to these things. So you can uh, use this property to make sure your styles get to where you expect them to be. Cool? Um, so that's, that's something to be aware of. And then I've got some, a bunch of converters down here, which probably could be its own file too. So the way the theming works is that my default theme brings all those bits together. Is that big enough? No, I know how to do this. No, not that. I said not that. There we go. Uh, now, I, now I question myself. There we go. That's big enough. Yeah, you can see that. Um, so this is, uh, this is my default. It's using merge dictionaries, which is, uh, what did we ship that in three something, right? Or was that like a two five, two, fi two six thing? Oh, it's been so many years. Um, platform keeps maturing and, and, and emerging. It's awesome. So this brings everything together. And then I have my dark theme and my, and my white theme. So my white theme is based on the default theme. So it, it, it has a base source of that default theme. But then it comes in and it customizes these particular colors. Now here's where the dynamic resources thing comes in. You have to give these guys a key, right? So that I can reference these colors elsewhere. And so let's go look at where that background color is being used in my global. So da -da -da, background color, no, not that background color, the other one. Search, uh, here we go. So. For my visual element background style, I'm using it here. Uses the dynamic resource. So what the dynamic resource is going to do for you, uh, it has awareness of basically on property changed, right? So when that color or anything that uses this color changes, it's going to make sure that that change is reflected immediately. Um, so similarly, uh, down here inside of, I believe it's our text, yep. Um, so for my text headline, the color being used is my text primary color. So everything in my white theme is using uh, essentially dark text on a white background, right? And you, as you would expect, my dark theme is basically the reverse. Dark background and then light text. So if we take a look at how this looks, I don't know, I think I probably need to redeploy this guy. We'll go ahead and do a build and deploy, and then we'll have hot reload going. And then I've got a couple of other cool things to share with you thereafter. But I didn't make any changes, so this build shouldn't take, you know, till tomorrow. Um, I have noticed uh, I've been testing some, some hot internal builds. Oh, don't you hate that when you, like, hit the home button on it just as it starts to launch, and you're like, did I just kill the thing I'm deploying? Just me? No? Oh, what did I do? Isn't this the kind of stuff Maddie ran into yesterday where everything was working? What? What? That's a lie. Dun, dun, dun. That's down on the custom render. That's so weird. Like I literally have done nothing there. Literally nothing. All right, so what do you do when that happens? Update. Update. <laughs> How about we do a clean? Um, you know what would be interesting? Where's a, uh, we'll take a look. Not that one. Uh, this one. What changed? Uh, let's see here, project, 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 designer, app, XAML. Maybe I screwed something up in the app XAML. Let's look at it real quick. And then we'll try to rebuild one more time, and if that doesn't work, we'll move on. Because I have some other really sweet demos that are even better. Um, what was the last thing we did here? I don't see any problems. I'm sure your stuff goes smoothly every single time, right? Yeah?
So uh, yeah, so this is essentially going to give me the ability to uh, swap themes. Um, and I'm going to be able to go into my settings panel and uh, see my different themes, change them, and see my screen update immediately. You can do it, little Android. Now it's taken a long time to build, right? After you do that clean, like what's up with that? Well, while that's going, because I can always come back to it, I mean that demo is gonna have to work because it really has like all the best demos in it. So let's talk for a minute about gradients and shapes while that's going. Since gradients are becoming so stinking popular, how do you, how can you do this? Well, you've got some options. Oh look, there's my little emulator. You can't see my emulator because it's on the other screen, but it's so tiny. All right, we're back. Here we go. Exit the slideshow. You can do it. All right, you see that? You can see that. Let's go back to the code so you can see it's running. All right, so I, I created a page within Zappy called a style guide. Um, so I, I grabbed all my colors and I throw them into this uh, collection view. And so I have a collection view that is, uh, what, four, four rows spanning, um, and then it goes across. Um, so if a collection view is still in uh, preview, uh, but it's in 4.1 stable, so if you choose to use it, it's available to you. Um, I would love to know how you feel about us doing features like that, basically baking them and working on them and adding features to them while they are in stable releases, but putting them behind flags. So it's, we're, we're kind of looking for you to uh, tell us how things are going. So, not right now. Don't everybody like stand up and go to the microphone, but. All right, so uh, in this app, you see I have a gradient, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. Um, but then I've got this visual settings up here, and so I've got this light and dark uh, switcher. Um, so this is actually, and I'm gonna add other themes as well. Um, fuchsia has been recommended as a theme style. I don't know why, um, but uh, Sweeky really likes. Has anybody gone to Sweeky sessions this week? I hear she's, yeah, she's great, right? Uh, so she loves the fuchsia. All right, so there's my dark, there's my light, right? Light bright, light right? Um, yeah, so I go dark, I close this guy. You can see that my screen back here is now dark as well, right? So the way in which that switch is occurring, um, if we go to my settings view model, Settings view model. Uh, here. So uh, I have a change theme command. Uh, it's going to come up. The selected theme is bound to the selected item of this. Uh, can you see my cursor? Yeah, you can. So the light and dark, that's actually a collection view. It's a horizontal sliding collection view. Um, matter of fact, well, no, I'll do that next. So, uh, yeah, so I'm listening to the selected theme as the uh, selected item, and then based on that, I'm going to new up my dark theme or my white theme and apply it to my app current resources. And you see how fast that worked. And you see that I don't have a small amount of resources in there. It's quite a bit of stuff. Um, so that works out really, really well. Um, now, that's one way in which you can do it. You can certainly try many other ways to do it. All this code is up on my GitHub. Try it out. I would love to know what you think. Um, yeah, so I thought it was super easy. It was much easier than I thought it was going to be. And I'm, I feel like now I'm a theming pro. I feel like I've got it. Nobody can stop me now. Fuchsia's coming. The fuchsia is now! Oh boy, oh boy. All right, so let's talk about that gradient. So, uh, how can we do gradients? So native code, of course. Ski is sharp, you have a canvas, you can draw your gradients on that. Uh, or the pancake view, anybody familiar with the pancake view? Makes me hungry every time I talk about it. Um, so Steven Thewissen uh, from the Netherlands, who is not here, as we have mentioned several times. No shame to you, Steven, for not being here. Let's all have an infomercial for Steven right now. Steven, I know you're crying at home right now that you weren't able to make it to the Zam Dev Summit but you know what you've done wrong. <laughs> I think he's on family vacation or something. Anyway, okay, see? 
I, I'm, I'm an equal opportunity picker on of peoples. Um, so those are options that you can use. Um, Pancake View is really almost a glorified uh, frame, essentially. It's like frame on steroids, if you take a look at it. Um, but very useful and, and could be something you want to use. But how would you do it if you wanted to do it yourself? Well, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. We're not talking about gradients anymore. But shapes, you have a lot of options for shapes. We're not going to spend much time on shapes. Uh, really, Skia Sharp for drawing is, is kind of your best go-to cross-platform for that. Um, very powerful, quite performant. I've seen some examples from you that are pretty mind-blowing. Um, I don't know what this flutter business is all about. <laughs> uh, you can do it in C Sharp. You can do it with Skia Sharp. It's gorgeous. Uh, animation is super easy. So, uh, but you can use bitmaps. That's something that gets overlooked a lot, right? Um, if you have a design and it has like this really interesting shape to it, uh, if you go look at the visual challenge, look what Ryan Davis did on the Qantas app. Up in the header, it has this little notch with a nice curve to it. It's really just an image in the background. Um, so sometimes when you look at a visual thing and you're like, how am I going to achieve that? That effect or that layout or I don't have a control that does exactly that, maybe it's not as hard as you think. You, you know, maybe the second thought you should have is how can, I, how can I do it for real, but how can I fake it? Like if I were going to fake it and just make it look like it is, right, then how could I do that? Um, and sometimes it's as simple as just embedding an image. Faking it's okay. Users don't know. Like, oh, did he really draw that? If the developer didn't draw that, this app is crap. You know, that's not how it goes. They don't know. All right, vector images, of course, SVGs. There are different controls you can load your SVGs into. Um, and then uh, I think I already mentioned drawing, Skia Sharp, or native code. You can draw in native code. So. Gradients and demos, 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 demos. Cool. So let's look at, uh, well, I'll show you first how I do the gradient and this um, flyout, OK? So this is the shell renderer. So if we go down here, I am doing Android. So let's look at the Android project. I've got my renderers, and I've got my Zappy shell renderer. All right. You. So down here, when I get my shell flyout content render, let me. OK, can we see that? Cool. Um, so I get it. I create a gradient drawable. I grab, notice I grab my colors, because I've got my app theme up here. This is a dependency injection. This is coming from my resources. I showed you in my resources my global file that I had a gradient start and end color. I kind of just mention it in passing. Um, and so I get my dependency for my uh, service so that uh, down here when I set this, I can set it to colors that have been established in my shared code, right? Um, and then the, uh, I was just talking to somebody about this. We use the coordinator view, uh, which is the view that allows us to do some really interesting animations. If you've seen any hero animations, or some of the more advanced material design-based animations. A lot of them are based on the coordinator view. Um, and Shell uses it for quite a bit of the work, which is why I am enc encouraging people to use Shell, because it's the basis for us to be able to add those things more easily. You know, I know that transitions can be a huge pain to do otherwise. So you certainly don't have to use Shell. I don't want to send you the message that if you don't use Shell, you are somehow in the dark ages. You're good. You, you love your navigation pages, your tab pages, your master detail pages. All that's still good. They're not going anywhere. Um, you know, it's not Toy Story. They're not being sent to the, um, you know, orphanage or whatever. What was, it wasn't an orphanage. It was like a daycare thing, right? No, no, not the new movie. This is like three. The really sad one. Yeah. The new one's like supposed to be good. I'm sure it's still sad. I heard people cry. I won't cry. There will be no tears coming from these eyes as far as you know. All right. Um, <laughs> this is bananas. All right, so, so yeah. So I get the coordinator layout. I set the background to it here. Um, and here I set this to transparent because there's some other things laying over the top of it with the app bar. So I want to make sure that uh, my gradient goes all the way from the bottom to the top because up here at the top, um, some of that is actually app, app bar. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, and that's how I'm getting my gradient. So I'm using native code there to do that. Now, 
let's look at another example. Uh, and this one is from Cyril. Uh, Cyril is in France, Paris. He did a uh, live stream with me on Twitch where he built a login screen. So I have another version of Zappy open here um, where he created a gradient button view or a gradient background view and a gradient button. So if we look at what he did here, and I'll run this demo shortly. So in the background of the grid, he has this custom control, the gradient view. Um, and he's grabbing that start and that end style, just like I mentioned from the static resources and putting it in here. Um, and so if we look at what that gradient view is, it is as you would expect a custom renderer. So when you come down to the Android code or the iOS code, all it does is draws a gradient and, and sends it back. So here's the Android code for the gradient view. Um, in this case, it's a visual, uh, visual element renderer and it's going to create a linear gradient, do the painting, and then draw it on a canvas. And then you can do the same thing in a button here. So I can have a button that's a custom button, not a uh, real button. It's a fake button. And the only difference between a fake button and a real button is what you call it. They're still buttons. <laughs> Um, and you can declare them all as interactive elements and you get all the accessibility benefits that you should. Um, so uh, you can use it here as well. Um, so if we run this, watch it throw an error like the last one. I dare you to throw an error. You ever talk to your code like that? I dare you. It's like a person that's mean. I've seen people gesticulate at their screens you know what that gesture is? All right, so here comes. Da -da -da. So one of the things I've been talking to, oh, I know, oh, there is an error. It is the same error. Look at that. Unbelievable. So how do you file a bug for that? I mean, the bug would basically say, I ran it in my, hotel room, I closed the lid, I went downstairs, I waited about two hours, I plugged the machine back in, and then it didn't work. <laughs> and that's literally what happened. I don't know. Don't know. All right, I'm cleaning. Isn't that what I did last time? I just cleaned and restarted it, right? I didn't restart the IDE. I didn't do the full dance. I did like a I just did like a, uh, sorry. I was gonna make like a dance joke. Like I didn't do the full mamba. I did like, you know, break dance, something. I remember, I mean, uh, does anybody remember breaking? Breaking from the 80s? Breaking, breaking feet. All of them, man, all of them. Is that how you hurt your foot? <laughs> Australia. That's what you claim. But you may have been trying to reclaim the glory days, you know? All right, we're still moving. We haven't broken yet. We're good. This just gives us more time to talk about these things. Is this helpful so far, these interesting things? Things that challenges that you may have faced recently or in the future, will face in the future? Speaking of the future, has anybody seen Dark? Dark on Netflix. I know it looks like a child abduction thing based on the, like, the, the, but that's not what it's about. It's like a, it's like a sci-fi thing. It's all in German. You can work on your German. All right. There we go. There we go. Come on. Give it up for Visual Studio. Visual Studio. Earning its money. Oh, my God. All right. So. There's a couple of cool things happening here. Uh, of course, you see the gradients that I mentioned, a little bit of a gradient in the button, um, and then you got this nice animation uh, transition happening here. Um, so that is not a real segmented control, it's a fake segment con segmented control. And the only difference between a real segmented control and a fake segmented control is what you call it. When your boss says, oh, is that a segment control? You say, yeah. It is, what's it look like? Um, yeah, so some cool transitions happening there and you notice the Octocat's tail waving? Oh, oh, that's Lottie. 
Um, so Lottie is a library from Airbnb uh, that they open sourced and uh, you can uh, use, what is it, Adobe? Um, After Effects. Is it After, yeah, After Effects um, and with a little extension that you can install and you can output your animations. I'm very sad that they actually don't allow you to do that from Adobe Flash or Animate or whatever they call it now because that'd be way easier than After Effects, but whatever. Um, yeah, and so uh, Martin Van Dyke, who was running around here, he may still be around here, um, it did the C-sharp implementation and he maintains the package for that, so uh, go thank him for the uh, Octocat. Cool, so gradients, cool. Um, and you see that I've got material working here and everything else as well. And I'll give you a quick look at how this animation works. This is also up on my GitHub, but I need to merge this PR, which is why it's a separate project right now, because I only got it this morning, um, which is totally fine. Totally fine. Um, all right, so the login page is just your straightforward XAML, as you would expect. I can make that a little bit bigger. I can get rid of this. I can do this. No, not that. Anybody ever accidentally hit that button right there? Don't hit that. Um, yeah, so really nothing fancy happening here. Um, you see that there are those animations, but those are not being done in XAML. I'm gonna show you how to do them in XAML in, uh, in a minute. Um, so if we look at the back and the uh, selector option tapped, this is the tap event on this guy here. This is what's triggering the animations. It's doing some translations. So translate to is just a uh, helper animation method. It's still using animation APIs on the back end. You also have fade to and things like that. Um, and then you can do some await task and group some animations so it does both the translation and the fade to at the same time, right? Um, and then of course you can manage some visibility and things like that. So you can do your animation this way. Uh, certainly nothing wrong with it. Um, but I'm also gonna show you how you can do it in XAML. All right, cool. So that's gradients and shapes. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Parallax. All right, I think this is my last or second to last demo. I actually have an extra demo, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right, so parallax. So here's what's happening with parallax. I kind of did an exploded view of what I'm going to show you. Uh, as a matter of fact, why don't, no, it's already here. Let's go ahead and build it and run it so that we don't run into the same problem we had previously. This is the login page example. I don't need that. Let's close it. And if I come over here, dun, 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 build, run, go. All right. Oh, you didn't see any of that. That's okay. Just I'm building, building and running. So. Um, what you have is you have different layers of things, and grid is a really great way to kind of have different layers. And then as things need to, to, to span rows or span columns, you use the span, uh, so a row span, call span, that sort of thing. Um, oh, it's the wrong one. Sorry. Um, and so, stop. Why did you run that code? That's not the right code. So weird. I mean, it's the same project, but they're running in two different directories, but I guess it does generate the same binary, so that's really weird. All right, uh, sorry, let me clean this real quick. Da -da -da, build, clean. Build, clean, clean all, clean it all. Not like my kids, don't just shove things in the closet, clean it all. Cool, all right. So what's gonna happen is uh, we're going to move uh, the list of content up, but we're gonna move the header, the background image, at a different rate from the content that the user is interacting with. That creates the parallax effect, right? So in order to do that, we need to be able to listen to the scroll data off of the thing I'm interacting with, right? And so t traditionally, that's what has caused problems for developers in Xamarin Forms is that not all things that scroll in Xamarin Forms tell you they're scrolling. Now, scroll view does have an on scrolled method or an event that will dispatch as the user scrolls. So you can handle that in code behind. Um, but I don't wanna do that in code behind because XAML hot reload is reloading XAML, it's not reloading code behind. I wanna stay in XAML as much as possible, right? 
so that I get the full benefit of reloading. So what happens here? Da -da -da. It's going to do that, right? Now, that little bar there is representative of the navigation bar. And then we also are going to do a fake navigation bar. And once you see the animation, you'll know why. So here are the ingredients to make this happen. I need to have some kind of scroll position or scroll percentage off of which I can trigger my other animations. Um, I need to have bindings so that I can do it all and react to it appropriately in XAML. Uh, and then I use liberally value converters so that I can apply the different effects that I want to. And really, the math is pretty easy on this stuff. To get something to do something at a different rate than something else, you take the percentage of the scroll times the max distance of the scroll times the factor, right? We all knew this. It's just multiply some things together and see what happens. It's really what it all comes down to. And your boss is like, oh, did you use a real parallax algorithm for that or a fake algorithm? Depends on what you call it. So you can mess around with these uh, all you want to, but really that's, that's as simple as it gets. So uh, let's talk for a minute about transitions because I want to kind of do these demos all together. So I'm not talking specifically about transitions from, uh, from one page to another page, but I'm talking about from state to state. So there's a nice library, again, from Stephen Thwissen. Stephen, I'm, I don't know what you did that you couldn't be here, but dude, He's here in spirit. Um, but you see this, when page content loads, have some kind of loading indicator. Tell the user you're doing something. And even better than just having a spinner, why not give them that experience of seeing the content like in a fake state and then replace it, right? It's something you see a lot of apps doing these days. I'm told Facebook does it. You know, I don't really use Facebook very much, but I've seen it happen. Um, so it tells people something happens, communicates what's happening. Animations communicate things. And when you do an animation willy-nilly or a transition willy-nilly just because it might look cool, uh, you may be sending a wrong message to somebody and you may be frustrating them because it might take too long and they just want to get from point A to point B, right? Um, so when should you use it? I think when changing state is uh, a great time. Uh, updating the data. Let people know something's happening, but don't give them a blank screen. Never give them a blank screen. Right? If you're going to have an empty view, which collection view supports empty view as a template. So that's awesome. List view didn't have that. Um, that's a great place to put some indication to the user of what's happening or instructions about what they need to do to populate that content. Right? Um, short running processes are really good to use for transitions. If you have a long running process, you might want to think closely about how you're handling that. And then validation, uh, any kind of form validation, that's a great time to practice your animation transition skills. So a couple of do's and don'ts. Some of these uh, you know, kind of say the same thing, but I thought maybe this would be a good way to kind of express it. Um, you know, don't be gratuitous. Don't make your animation a hindrance. Like if I have to wait for an animation to complete to get to where I'm going, that's probably not the best place for it. Um, if you try to transition more than one thing at a time, you run the risk of overwhelming the device, and then they just become super choppy. If you've ever used the flyout menu, and you've noticed, maybe on Android in particular, that opening and closing the flyout menu while you're changing content makes it chop, and it doesn't go smoothly, it's because it's doing too many things at one time. So what you can do is you can set a delay on one of those things, maybe let the, let the menu close first, then load the content to the page, or vice versa, um, then that's a way to get around that. But be, be careful about trying to do too much at once. Um, make it reversible, trigger it in response to a user action. These things make it delightful, right? When the user feels like it's a real thing in their hands that's responding to their touch, it's very delightful. Or responding to their voice, or re responding to their location. It knows, it's aware of where they are and what they're doing. That's, that's really delightful for people. All right, so let's look, at, uh, let's look at the demo. Cool, we're back in the right app. So what you didn't see the last time was when I built it and ran it, it was still that login screen, which was super weird because that wasn't even the code that I was building from. Cool, so I have a page here in my scenarios called product details. Please don't crash. Sweet. So you see that I've got my loading animation there. 
and then hopefully if the internet is behaving, I'm going to get an image. Oh, come on, you can do it. Take two. It's trying to load from the internets. Do we have internets? Come on, you can do it. Looks much better with, uh... hi mom. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I mean, I felt uplifted as that music was happening. Didn't you? All right. Well, I don't know why my guitar is not loading. Let's, uh, well, let's look at the XAML real quick. We've got hot reload going. We can take a moment to look at the XAML. All right, so I have a lot of XAML here, y'all, because like I said, I was trying to stay in XAML as much as possible to benefit from hot reload and not go other places, okay? So first thing you'll probably notice is, holy crap, there's a lot of XML and S. That's a lot of namespaces. I got a lot of files all over the place. But like I said, I'm using this easy loading thing. Um, this is my page for which I need to bind to something for some reason. I don't even remember why I have it this, but it must be really important. Um, in this particular case, I'm, I'm, I'm hiding some shell stuff because I just don't want it here for the purposes of this demo. Um, and then of course I'm uh, forcing a couple of styles here for the purposes of the demo too. Um, I am setting my binding context here in the XAML. I don't know if this is a common practice for you. I'm finding this works out quite well with shell and shell is kind of designed with this pattern in mind. Um, that you put, I probably shouldn't talk about Shell too much. Shane has a session later today on Shell. Go see Shane's talk on Shell. It's going to be great. Everybody's planning on going to Shane's talk, right? I think it's right here. should be right here. Um, all right. So, of course, in my resources, I have basically nothing except for some animations I have declared. Um, I am using Zam animation from Javier Suarez Ruiz. Um, he's on the VS Mac team, and he's in Spain. So he does some really nice examples online. If you ever go look him up, I think he has Xamarin Awesome or some GitHub like that. I know we've got a couple of those nowadays. So check that out, some really good examples. So I've got a couple of pre-built animations here. This one's a carousel fade out. This is a nav bar fade out, carousel fade in, fake nav bar. I guess I shouldn't call it a fake nav bar. I should be like Dave's nav bar or something like that. It's not fake, it's real. Um, so then, of course, I have my grid. Um, and then the image at the top is this guy right here, this carousel view. So dun, 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 where are my images? They're right here. What's wrong with you, image? Oh, look at that awesome URL. I know, I just, look, I'm in love with guitars right now. Oh, I can't even control my keyboard. And I saw this picture of this guitar, I'm like, that's what I'm gonna use in my demo. Let's just make sure the image even exists. It does exist. What's your problem? Let's see if I can bump it. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Man, Android bites again. Let's do it. I'm not scared. Let's update Visual Studio right now. All right. Oh no, it's probably not gonna do that. I do have a little glitch where it doesn't like to start the emulator from Visual Studio right now. Uh, no, I don't wanna, no, I don't. I also have a really weird glitch where Hyper-V is actually slower than Haxum. Does anybody have that going on? Is that your experience? Cool. All right. Restarting the emulator. This is why I like doing live streaming. It's much more low key, and you're just like, ah, oh, let's work through this stuff. It's all good. I don't have to be up here being all pretty for you. All right, oh, it started. That was super fast. Is it actually alive or is it frozen? Cool, it is alive. All right, redeploy. So now you're saying that I'm gonna get my uh, image? Who's, who says I'm gonna get an image? A Couple people hesitantly saying yes. One, one very confident person. Most of you are like, I think maybe. Oh, that was fast too. I wasn't even paying. I'm used to this going a lot slower. Oh, yeah. All right. All 
also why I enjoy doing live streaming and live coding, because uh, y'all get to help me. <laughs> All right, all right, cool. So here's what's happening. I'll scroll a little bit slower. You see the parallax going on there with the, with the uh, yeah? And then you see that I have a nav bar and a nav bar. And as I get up here to the top, the image fades out, boom, and then my uh, nav bar fades in. So, you know, there's, here's, here's the hard way to do that nav bar transition, okay? The hard way is to say, I'm going to do all that work. I'm only gonna have one back button, I'm gonna have one zoom button, I'm gonna have one shopping cart button, I'm gonna have one background, and I'm gonna do all those translations myself. That's the hard way. The easy way is to say, I'm gonna have the first state, and then I'm just gonna create another nav bar and fade it in over the top of it. And they're all gonna do the same thing. It's, trust me, much easier, okay? So that's actually what's happening there, and basically as I scroll up, I get to a certain point and it triggers that animation. So I'm using event triggers and I'm using data triggers, um, and I'm also using bindings. So for the, tr for the parallax scroll, since that's what I'm supposed to be talking about, um, I have everything inside of a scroller view. You can see that the scroller view is a custom view. It's just a scroll view on which I have exposed the scroll property because up here on the carousel, which is the, um, which is the guitar, da -da -da -da, you see that I am, I have, no, not the data trigger, the translation. I have this code here. I am translating the Y position of the carousel. So as I scroll up, my carousel moves, my, my guitar moves, right? So I am binding to a scroll percentage, which is just a property I exposed off of the scroll, scroller view. Um, and then again, I have a converter here. And I'm using this. This is a nice little trick that Stefan showed me. Maybe it's not a trick, I'm just using the parameters. I have the ability, because sometimes you wanna pass more than one parameter, right? So I'm just passing the, all as a string with a semicolon delimiter, and I can pass as much as I want, right? Um, so I'm passing a factor of what I want it to do, a minimum value, a maximum value, whether or not it is true or false, I don't even remember what that property was for, um, and then uh, I don't even remember what that one was for. So, but the thing is, is that because that's all there now, I don't have to go back and forth to C Sharp to change anything, I don't have to go back to code behind to change anything, I can just tweak these values and reload and reload and reload. So. You know, I could take this and I can say, okay, we're gonna do, um, do just one and save that, reload the page, and then now, now it's going the wrong direction, right? So it's like, oh, Dave, you're a moron, you're gonna have to rebuild this whole thing. No, we shall not rebuild. That's your goal. And your whole goal as a developer now is to stop rebuilding. So what can I possibly do to make this thing do something different? So now, Reloads, did it reload? See, sometimes you don't even know if it reloaded. Oh, look at that, now it's, now it's like I'm chasing it away. You know, and that's not the effect you want either, is it? So I can just keep you know, tweaking this, and I found that the negative 10 factor seems to work out pretty well, and now I get my nice transition. Now, another thing you'll notice is that, um, I don't know if you can see this, but you see how it went to white, but my background is actually like a uh, gray color? Um, I actually have another box view sitting behind the carousel view, so I can fade out the carousel view but keep it on a white background. So it does some nice things there. So quite a few things happening here. Now, uh, I didn't really show you how the easy loading for uh, the screen works, so to go back real quick, product details, that part right there, um, I'll show you how that works real quick. Yeah. No, nah, man, I'm not quitting. We're going, we're going for it. We're going for it. Do you, I mean, I'm Kramer up here, man. We are going to the end of the line. No, I'm just kidding. I'm wrapping up, I'm wrapping up. This is the last demo, the bonus demo. No, it's all good. Just give each other a hug, it'd be fine. Um, so, it's it Brandon? Oh, Brandon, you trying to boo me off the stage? Come on, man. No, I'm just kidding, I'm almost done. So uh, really all you do is you do this, you provide a loading template. 
Now, I don't know the performance implications, so your mileage may vary, but you pretty much just fake out the, the, the content that you're going to be displaying, okay? Um, and then you need to bind this attached property is loading to something. So I have an is busy, right? And you probably all have an is busy in your view models. So that's pretty much it. This code is all up on my GitHub. There is one more thing I'll point you to. It's in my slides because I think that this is a really great resource to check out. Do this, display that action. Uh. So Kim Philpotts, who works on MS Learn, uh, formerly Xamarin University, has been Twitch streaming his examples. This is one that he did. I think it's crazy good. Um, I mean, you do this kind of stuff, your boss is gonna give you a raise. <laughs> Seriously, look at that. Um, so check his stuff out. This demo is up on his GitHub as well, um, as well as several others. Animation can really be a nice touch on top of everything. But you know, there's a lot of other basic things you can take care of. So anyway, thank you so much for your time, for listening to my jokes. I hope you learned something. Everybody stay. Are you